let me let me keep this big picture and simple if i have that stick there and i said to a golfer hey in the beginning i need you to move this club and past impact but i've got the little far down probably put it about three quarters of the way down the club and i said to you hey past impact i need to have that club head working to the right of the stick yep. this is more of an end all be all uh, kind of motion mm -hmm. and drill and so as i'm doing this so again i've got this angled maybe just higher than the angle of my driver from down the line. From face on, if I took my setup position, I put the club down, it's maybe three quarters of the way down the shaft, right? So I still get there. And so I'm just gonna do the same feels I just had before. I don't wanna go down, low left, head forward. That would be the shortest distance with the most amount of effort. I do wanna go low and inside, up and to the right with my head more back. Exactly. That would be the most distance right. with the least amount of effort. All right, guys, before we dive into this video, I want to talk to you quickly about two things. Number one, we have launched our golf school dates for 2020 in Bethlehem, PA. We're going to go ahead and put a link in the description down below. If you'd like to come get some in-person coaching, I would certainly love to have you. Now, if you can't make it to Bethlehem for in-person coaching, would still love to work with you via CogornoGolf.com. That's our online community full of golfers like yourself and myself looking to improve. That's where you can send me your swing. I can help identify priorities, take your game to the next level. Most importantly, as a member of Cogorno Golf, you get access to our Facebook group where you can post that swing, get into the community, get into the conversations. You get access to everything we have, all of the master classes, the member library, the practice section, as well as the quick fix section. We'd love to see you guys there. Hey guys, so we're out here with Adam Bazaljet from the Scratch Golf Academy. Now I know most all of you already know who Adam is, but if you're not familiar, Adam is a three-time Teacher of the Year in the Southwest Florida section. Thankfully. Uh, spent about 13, 14 years, right, as a director of coaching for a Mr. David Ledbetter. Yeah, that was good uh, for me. <laughs> and he runs the Scratch Golf Academy, which has awesome YouTube videos and content. If you guys haven't checked that out, I would encourage you to do so. Now in today's video, this is gonna be video number four. Right in our four part series on hitting the ball farther with less, uh, with less effort rather. And so we're gonna talk about some downswing and follow through pieces. Exactly. And so let's get started. Great. All right, Adam, so let's dive in. But before we do, uh, just a reminder guys, this is number four in this series. Right. Now videos number one and three in this series are on Scratch Golf Academy's channel. That's Adam's channel that you just met before. The link will be in the description down below. Please go check those out. I'm gonna remind you again at the end, but would love for you to check those out. Now in this video, and video number two is at your channel. And video right. number two, hopefully you guys have seen here um, beforehand. If not, again, we'll link that stuff below. It really helps set up right. all the videos as we go. And so downswing follow through, right? What are the pieces that we would see for a golfer, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of their speed and ability level, to be able to hit the ball the farthest with the least amount of effort? Right. And one of the biggest pieces we see here would be what we'll call swing direction right. and maybe exit direction into the follow through. Exactly. And so um, we're gonna show you in a minute a couple of uh, the best players and kind of what they do into mm -hmm. their follow through versus maybe the, the normal golfer. But um, the now, just to plug video number three, not just because it was a scratch golf channel, but <laughs> honestly, there's some stuff that I thought was really good, you know, that would be really helpful to you on how to get the downswing started to kind of set you up for this. So check that out if you haven't checked it out. It really helps you get ready for this. Yeah, and I would really say that every every video so far, those first three, if if a golfer got really good at doing each part, yep. right? It's easier to do the next part. Yeah, Absolutely. instead of just starting here, yeah, right? Exactly. If you haven't seen those other two. Uh, so follow through. What we would see in correlation with speed and mm -hmm. effort and distance um, let's talk about direction of the movement of the club and then maybe we'll call it height of the movement of the club. And so with the longer hitters, we would see a general correlation with the club head and shaft uh, and especially if I remove the body, mm -hmm. right? If I were to look at those players and I took the body out of it, you would definitely see the club head traveling more to the right, right? and more up. Exactly. Right? And we'll show you that here on the, on the video here shortly. Yeah, much more up and to the right for the player that hits it the farthest. Right. Now, as they add rotation and things like that, it might not appear as far. Right. Uh, but definitely... But it's further out and up than it would be for a short iron, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for right. sure. And the more up, 
that I hit on the golf ball, which we're trying to do for effortless right. power, the more to the right I need to swing it. Right. Right. And so the thing we would see with the golfers who don't hit it as far would be that the club head would travel more down mm -hmm. and exit more low and left. Exactly. As a general theme. Yeah. So maybe we'll take a look at some yeah. of those good Let's golfers. Let's show you a couple of great players in, in action. You'll see the distinctive differences, subtle but distinctive, between short iron and driver swings for these great players. Okay, so let's take a look here. Another of one of the best in the world you might recognize, a Mr. Rory McIlroy. He hits the ball fairly well and drives it very far. Now, we have Rory with an iron on the left and a driver on the right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the driver first. And really what I want you to key in here on is the club head during the downswing. But in particular, even uh, relative to video three, notice the club head on the way down. Notice how that club head relative to his hands starts working up and behind him as he starts down which is going to set up uh, his down. Look how far behind him that club head gets as he starts down. Now from there, the direction of that swing circle is going to be lower to the ground earlier and more up and right past impact. So you can see where that club head gets in his follow through. And just here is a general sense of, right, here's the toe line. Here would be relative to his target line and the club head being outside that line or his swing direction being up and to the right really happening from that early getting the club behind him move. If we take a look on the left here with an iron, we're going to see a lot of the same fundamentals, but the club head doesn't pitch as far behind him. You see a difference in the angle of the shaft here on the left versus the right. And with that, his swing direction not going to be as up and to the right, a little bit more down and left with the iron swing past impact. So you can see on the right, high bomb draws, and then on the left there, a little bit more neutral with the iron swing. All right, so we got a pretty good visual there, right, of the differences we're looking yeah. for. And so let's say I understand that, Adam, but I want to start to implement this. Where might I start here in terms of feels? Well, I would definitely start without the, without the golf ball there and start to map this thing out a little bit. It's not really that hard to do if you can just relax and play around a little bit. Yeah, and I think the point that you made before that's really good is if I remove that just to start with, yeah and get a general sense of swing shape. Exactly. Right? I mean, listen, your mind is wired up so that if you have a target, let's say a roach is running across the floor, not a pleasant example maybe, but you will go directly towards that thing. That is efficiency. And if your mind makes that ball too much of a target, people don't even realize they do it that much, you will go straight at the thing and it'll ruin your swing shape. So get that thing out of the way before and tuck that information away don't let the ball ruin this for you. Yeah, exactly. And it I, will eventually. Just don't let it in the <laughs> <laughs> To start with. Once the tournament starts, you, then it can happen. Different ball game. Yeah. And so I, I like as I'm starting to build this shape, getting a sense of kind of an external, here's my club head in mm -hmm. space. And I'm really going to start to get a sense of working that thing, as we talked about in video mm -hmm. three, right on Scratch Golf Academy, is that club head working from far back behind yes. me, kind of getting lower to the ground earlier, and then higher and to the right past exactly. impact. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Now, what I see as a good visual here is I've got this little stick down my target line, Adam, uh -huh. and that represents my, my target. What I'm seeing from my point of view is the club head, and we're exaggerating this, I'm seeing that the club head past impact, from my point of view, is actually getting to the right mm -hmm. of that stick on the ground, right? If I'm taking my body out of it. Right. That would be a good visual for someone. If I'm swinging this and I see that club pull quick left, that would be not, not what we're going for, right? right? <laughs> we want to get a feel for the club head working lower and inside, clipping the tee and working to the right of the stick and more vertical compared to normal, right? right? right. And then I want to be able to take that without a ball, get mm -hmm. a general sense for a feel, and then when I put a ball down, be willing to exaggerate as much. You must do that. You must be playful. You must, that's how you learn motor programs. We're so used to learning cognitive skills at adults because we haven't learned any motor programs for 40 years, most that's of true. us, that we don't realize the amount of playfulness and just mistake making and just learning on the go, not trying to always do it exactly right and punish ourselves if we don't. So relax and, and just exaggerate it. Like Eric says, it'll be a lot easier for you. And I can tell you there's a real, I'll go this angle, there's a real correlation between this because over, if you're swinging more in this direction, it is by nature, the geometry of it is more low to high. And if you're swinging in this direction, by nature, it is high to low. So whatever end, whatever plane is closest to your heels is gonna be the low plane. Whatever is out here is gonna be higher off the ground. So yes. that's what you are looking for. These tie together. Love that. 
club head working from lower and behind me during the downswing. Yep in through the ball and higher to the right. And I might start just chipping some out here, you know, like 100, 150 mm -hmm. type of yards just to get a general feel for swing direction. I'll, I'll demonstrate one how yeah. I would start this if I was a golfer and this was new. And I know we said it before, but man, if you did the pieces we talked about earlier, all of this would be so Absolutely. much easier. Uh, but let's go ahead and just chip one here at him first. So lower to the ground here, higher and to the right. And I'll just chip one. Good. And so I hit that, what, 100, 125 yeah, yards? something like that. Exaggerated motion. Now, I think one good caveat before we give a feedback drill is there's this thing in golf, right, which is the club face. Mm -hmm. And that club face is often king or queen of the hill, yes. depending on how you look at it. Yeah. Now, if you're a golfer looking to hit the ball farther and you do what we suggest here and you're coming into the ball with any amount of open club face, this is going to be difficult. You're not going to love the results straight away, I can tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the ball's going to go too far to the exactly. right. Exactly. And so probably as a precursor to this particular mm -hmm. part, you want to make sure your club face is in order. That's Absolutely. a whole separate, a whole separate video and conversation. But mentally, it is very difficult to sustain the pattern of swinging out here to the right if the balls are going way, way right. You yeah. just want to fight it. So make sure, like Eric said, you sort the club face out before you really embark on this if it's a problem for you. Yeah, exactly. If those balls are going to the right when you're doing this, don't stop swinging high and right yet. Get that club face in yeah, order work first. that face. So let's go ahead and just do one more. My club head from our last video is as far behind me mm -hmm. as I can get it. It's lower to the ground and then it's higher to the right. More distance with less effort. Awesome. That really felt like I was low and from the inside. And now for me, that's my normal fault, right? Mm -hmm. I normally get too low and inside. And so I probably need to feel a little bit of the opposite, but for most people, they need a right. lot of that just to and get to neutral. You know, I would really emphasize as well, and you always hear golf instructors say this sort of stuff, but stick with this stuff. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You might make a real difference over the course of a few days or whatnot, but if you stick with the stuff, you'll see over the weeks that it'll continue to evolve and continue to get better. A very quick anecdote, a group of us instructors down here were hearing from a famous club fitter, and he fit clubs for a tour pro called Kevin Streelman, amongst other players. And Kevin Streelman, you may or may not have heard of him, he's won multiple times, yeah. but he had a tendency to hit too much down at the ball, which we're kind of addressing. So what they did for him, they built him a 6.5 degree driver. He plays with like a 10.5, and he would just practice with it playfully just trying to get as much height as he could reasonably get and they said it took a few months but gradually 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 he got the thing sorted out so these drills stick with them it's not all or nothing what shows up in one day love it so adam let's talk about a feedback drill yep right if i'm going to practice that mm -hmm. and i think an easy way to start if i grabbed an alignment rod yes just as a a, a little piece in front of me now i've got my golf ball I've got an alignment rod in front on my target line. Now, if I put this stick, let's say just inside of my target line, and I angled it to start with maybe, uh, let's call it you know, 45 degrees. Okay. So maybe something roughly along the same line as my, my angle of my club. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe if you're just starting out here, a, a pool noodle on top of that <laughs> yeah, could be beneficial. So. Or uh, a big pair of oven mitts on there. <laughs> yeah. so sting yourself Something the for through. protection. But the point of this, I think, goes back to what we talked about before is, let me get a little more external. Let me, let me keep this big picture and simple. If I have that stick there and I said to a golfer, hey, in the beginning, I need you to move this club and past impact, but I've got the little far down, probably put it about three quarters of the way down the club. And I said to you, hey, past impact, I need to have that club head working to the right of the yeah. stick. This is more of an end all be all uh, kind of motion mm -hmm. and drill. And so as I'm doing this, so again, I've got this angled maybe just higher mm -hmm. than the angle of my driver from down the line. From face on, if I took my setup position, I put the club down, it's maybe three quarters of the way down the shaft, right? So I still get there. And so I'm just going to do the same feels I just had before. I don't want to go down, low left, head forward. That would be the shortest distance with the most amount of effort. I do want to go low and inside, up and to the right with my head more back. Exactly. That would be the most distance right. with the least amount of effort. And so I can put this in here, start to clip the tee, and get a feel for the club moving to the right of it. Now, i got to admit, for me, this is pretty normal, right. so I don't feel exaggerated. 
But if you're someone who hits a slice pattern, this would not feel normal to you. Oh my yeah, gosh, this exactly. is gonna feel a mile to the right and that's okay yeah. in the beginning. And so maybe we would start off with the same pieces, mm -hmm. right? Kind of little half ones, just get a sense of where that club's yeah. gone. And I'm feeling, oh my gosh, Adam, that feels like that club head's exiting, I mean, way, way over to the right compared to normal. I'm gonna go ahead and pop a ball down mm -hmm. and maybe start short and, uh, and hit a couple here. Let's you will ahead. find without a ball, it's pretty easy to do. It really is. I mean, someone can make a stick, a club go this side of the stick versus the other. Again, the challenge is a little more when the ball's there. So I think you're going to hit one at a lot less than full speed, right? Yeah, I'm the first one, yeah. Definitely the way to start. And again, we go back to that playfulness. Don't let the ball badger you so much with its presence that you're not able to do what you want to do. You can swing in the direction you want. If you don't hit it solidly, that's fine. And, and I think you made a really good point with the with Kevin Shrewman of the lower lofted club and yep. working around things. I would say a golfer who has a club face that's too open, which is 80% of the people I right. see, this is going to be very difficult. But on the contrary, if a golfer came in, if every golfer came in and the club face was too closed, their brain would have a lot of motivation to... Yeah, they certainly would, right? yeah. And survival instinct, yeah. Survival, exactly. So if you struggle with this drill, I would bet at least eight out of 10 yes. have a club face that's too open, yeah. which needs to be addressed. Okay, I digress. So sticks in front, the ball's up here. I'm feeling the club head behind me, low to the ground, high and above. I'm gonna start a little bit short, and then I'll kind of build my way up a little longer. Good. And that's nice about little, what I would want, right? Yeah, nice little looping draw there, yeah. beautiful. And in the beginning of trying to gain more distance, that would be the ball flight pattern that I'd be trying to build in. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so guys and gals, um, follow through, right? A couple of things I think, mm -hmm. big picture of this four part series. Go back and watch video number one on Scratch Golf Academy's channel. Watch the second one, watch the third one, then watch this. Building block this. Yes. Put all the pieces in. If all you need to do to gain more distance is a simple setup piece we did and that's it, keep it that simple, yes. right? But then if you, if you want to, you can building block this, each piece, should be progressively easier if you have mm -hmm. the last piece It really built will in. be, it really will be. And this is driving, hitting the ball farther with less effort. Scratch Golf Academy, we're gonna link their video down below and we'll go ahead and link some of the previous videos up here on top. Adam has much more great videos in terms of driving the golf ball and all things golf. We'll link his uh, channel description down below. If you guys did like this video, do us a favor, click the like button, click the notification bell, please subscribe. Adam, thanks for having us out. Eric, pleasure. Appreciate you, man, okay. thank you.